So hello everybody and welcome to our first edition of the new series called Charticulator. In this series, we are going to learn how to use a Microsoft developed tool that allows us to create custom visualizations that we can use elsewhere. And we're going to start this series developing a radial chart that you see behind me, okay? So to get started, you go to charticulator.com and then you click on launch and that will launch the application. The first thing it's asking us is sample data. So how does your data look like? And it's actually very useful because then you can start visualizing and see how things are going to get represented. So if we drop this following data set, this is the data temperatures for a city called Sheffield in the UK. So we have year, month, and then the average temperature for each year. And then each month, click done. And here we have the fields, right? So now, the first thing we need to tell the charticulator is, okay, how do we want our data to be represented? And if we go back to our chart, you can see here that data points are rectangular. Okay, so we have a rectangle for the average temperature. So right away, we can start plotting that. Here you see something called marks. So we have a rectangle, a ellipse, and a triangle. So we're going to use the rectangle. So you choose it, you drop it in there, and voila, okay? So you have the first step of our skeleton. Now, we don't want to have an X, Y axis um, on this chart. We want to have a circular one. So we need to change what is called here the scaffold. So the scaffold is basically the, the skeleton of our chart. And we want to change it to a circular one. You see how cool this is? So now we have a circular one with a rectangle. So what we need to do now is to say which field should apply to what in the chart. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. So first of all, we want to have the height of the rectangle as the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the longer the rectangle. And you can see here that's what's going on. Then we want to group by month. You can see here in the axis. And then we want to color it by year. So we can see, oh, this is 2017, 18, 19, 2020. Let's see how we do that in Charticulator. So the first thing we said, we want to have the height temperature. So you see here that this has been selected. You can select it here, the shape. So this is selecting one shape. You can see here it's zoomed. Whatever you see here is zoomed in there. And then you can see here the height. So the only thing we need to do is to drop the temperature into height. And then, as you can see here, the chart changes. So it's representing already the values that it sees in the data set. So the, the temperature, this is probably by year. And we want to group that by month, we said. So if you click on the chart, you'll see that the skeleton, the, the scaffold, you see here, the plot segment. So in here, you'll see angular axis. You don't need to actually drop it there. You can actually go and do month and drop it into the axis like that, right? So you see, oh, I want my data in the axis. I want the axis to be month. So I want my data group by month. The next thing that you see is that these things are very tied together and you want to separate them so it's easier on the eye. So this is actually very cool. You can click on that and expand it. How cool is that? Otherwise, you can change the gap in here as you like. But I thought that was super cool. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to color this by year, we said. so. What we're doing is changing the shape. So we need to click on the shape and then change it that by the color, the fill by year. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, now all your data charts should have a legend and a data legend, okay? But before I do that, I wanna have the access legend as close as to my data as possible. So it's very easy on the eye to read. So what I'm going to do is, and I, again, I'm, I'm changing something on the axis. So I need to think, okay, where is my axis? My axis is on the skeleton, on the scaffold. So you need to click in here 
And then you will see here, I need to change something in the axis. You go to the axis and then here, opposite. Oh, how cool is that? So now we have December, January, February, March. Now we're going to add a legend and this was not intuitive at all, but now I remember it. So we want to change, we want to add a legend for what? For the coloring. So you need to go to shape, you need to go to fill. And then if you click in there, it's like properties, just click there and it will add a legend. Okay. The next thing we want to do is add the data points, right? So what, what is this number? So it's not like just guess. So we're going to change something on the shape. We want to click on the shape or you can click in here, zoom in, just roll it in the mouse. You can also attach and detach in here, but I'm just going to zoom in and then we're going to put a text. I want the text to be actually outside here. So I'm going to anchor it like in there and it didn't do it, but don't worry, we can change it. So I want to anchor it outside. There you go. Now I want to have this a little bit smaller. And I want to change it like that. I want to move it outside. And now it's looking quite cool. You see? Not bad. Because I'm choosing the smallest one, but that could work anyhow. So even the biggest one gets the text. That could work. Otherwise, maybe we need to pick the biggest one and then put it outside. If we want to have all of them, oi, control Z, that will take you back. <laughs> Otherwise we can take the bigger one, the biggest one, and then just gently move the text out. Please. Where is the anchor? Okay. And now we have all of them outside, but it would be too much outside. So I don't want to do that. But you can see how flexible the tool is, right? So now we have all the elements that we, we want. One thing I would like to do, depending on now the story that you want to tell, you always have to think about what do you want to convey with this chart? If you want to tell or if you want to see if the weather is getting hotter in Sheffield, what I would do is to color everything gray and then get the max for each month. And then you'll see better. I think just, just color the max for each month. I don't think it's possible to do it here. You'll have to import it to Power BI or Excel or Tableau to actually do that. Maybe it's possible. I just don't know how to do it, but there's another story that you can tell. I'm going to show you this. That, that's the power of these chart calculators. You can play with it. So if we click on the coloring, Again, we go to shape and then we click on the coloring in there on the properties. You have the possibility, for example, to color by temperature instead of by year. And then it will show you a, a quite clear story, right? That the winter months are not that um, hotter as the summer months. But if you are plotting, I don't know, like sales data, it might show you some interesting stuff, which months are the highest or the hottest months for you. Okay. So maybe with weather, we already know that, but with other type of data, that could be quite a cool visualization actually. So now that we have this, what we have left is to save and to export. So to save, just click save, but then you have the possibility to save us. You have this possibility to export and you can export it as an image. You can export it as a PNG, JPEG or SVG. How cool is that? Export as an HTML, which is what you were seeing up there. Charticular template, I guess, is if so you can plug it, plug it back in. And then there's a Power BI custom visual, so you can put it into Power BI. I'll show you how to do the Power BI thing in the Kerbal channel, but uh, it's quite cool. Anyhow, so this chart, it will be available for download on the Discord channel. So I'm going to put a link down below so you can just go and grab it. 
and uh, I'll be back next week with a new chart. Which one would you like me to do? So give me some tips. Anyhow, I hope this was useful and I think I hope that you think the chart calculator is an interesting tool to learn. The more I learn, the more I'll show you. Okay? Until the next video, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>